How can tracking small cap companies' cash flow help inform market participants? Hello, I'm Michael Mel, Global Head of Custom Indices at S&P Dow Jones Indices. Today, we're going to take a custom look at screening the S&P Small Cap 600 for the top 100 companies based on free cash flow yield with Sean O'Hara, President of Pacer ETFs, and Cameron Dawson, Chief Investment Officer at New Edge Wealth. Thank you, Sean and Cameron, for joining us today. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having us. Sean, can you explain free cash flow and free cash flow yield to our audience? So we use a screen for free cash flow yield. And free cash flow yield is a fairly simple metric. It's the free cash flow a company generates divided by its enterprise value. And enterprise value is market cap plus debt minus cash. So it's just a way to compare on a relative basis how expensive or cheap stocks are versus their peers. For example, if I had one stock with a $20 enterprise value, it was giving me $1 worth of free cash flow every year. You could divide that one by 20 and get a 5% free cash flow yield. If I had another stock with a $20 enterprise value, it was giving me $2 worth of free cash flow. I divide 20 into two, I get a 10% free cash flow yield. Our argument is that if you're going to pay the same amount, $20, it's far better to get $2 worth of cash flow as opposed to one. We stumbled on this idea at Pacer uh, because, you know, on the ETF side of our business, we like to do what we call innovative, disruptive, and unique. And we were looking for a, a, a newer, maybe a more relevant way to do value. Most traditional value strategies rely very heavily on price to book and in particular low price to book. The value of the US stock market today is primarily intangible assets. It's almost 90%. So there's not much tangible book value to look at to use that type of a screen. And so we uh, did a lot of research on free cash flow yield when we built the index with you guys. Um, and so we use the free cash flow yield of the constituents coming out of the S&P 600. We eliminate financials, and this is an important step in small cap land. We also eliminate those constituents in the S&P 600 that have negative earnings forecasts going forward. There's a higher percentage of companies that don't make money in small cap indexes versus large cap index. So we wind up pulling out 100 stocks that are all profitable. They all have a very high free cash flow, and we'll probably get a chance to talk about how important that is today. Um, and then they traditionally will trade at a discount to the index we're pulling from. Um, and so that's how the index is constructed. Got it. Thank you. So a better return for each dollar. So getting to the index, why did you apply this strategy to the S&P 600 to create the Pacer U.S. Small Cap Cash Cows Index? Well, you have two choices, I guess, if you're going to look at small cap index, the S&P 600 or the Russell 2000. The big difference for us is that if you use the Russell 2000, you're picking up 1,400 more smaller cap names. And so, and secondarily, there's a far greater percentage of those names in that index that, are, that have negative earnings. So we focused on the S&P 600 as a way to eliminate having to get rid of more and more companies and to move up the cap scale a little bit on, in small cap land. And so that's why we, we picked the S&P 600. Great. Thank you for that. Cameron, from a market participant's perspective, where might this strategy fit? It's really important for long-term investors because when we think about small cap investing, what we find is that there's more episodic volatility to the upside and the downside, meaning that when small caps do well in general, what tends to happen is they do really well for a short period of time, but then they have a great propensity to give up all of that outperformance because as, as Sean said, you typically have more companies that don't have as much profitability or might have more debt. So by being able to focus on the companies that actually generate cash flow that they can reinvest in their businesses, what we see is this ability that in the up cycles they participate, these are great companies, but they're far better at defending capital on the downside. They're far less likely to run into big trouble in down markets. So as a long-term investor mm -hmm. who's also very tax sensitive, this allows me to build a position in small caps that I know I can hold through a cycle. This means that through an up cycle and through the down cycle, because it is so good at defending capital, that's powerful because then I don't have to recognize tax gains and I have this ability to compound growth each and every cycle. I just want to interject if it's sure. okay. Yeah. And we're seeing that this year. When mm -hmm. you look at the index that it is behind this small cap index, the, the, the cash cows index, that index is actually up this year, I think somewhere around 14 or 15 percent. And both of the major small cap indexes are down. So it, it, it sort of belies Cameron's point here, which is high quality small caps will go up when the small cap cycle is in your favor. But when things go the other way, 
that's when the names that have the highest free cash flow that are profitable tend to be able to survive a little better. Got it. And specifically holding it for the long term is key. So another question that I have for you, Cameron, is again, because you're a market participant, how important is it to you knowing that it's based on the S&P 600 and that S&P Dow Jones is the calculation agent for the index behind this strategy? Well, to Sean's point, the starting point of removing the lowest 1,400 names, the smallest names, if we look at a broader index of small caps, focusing just in that 600, means we're already starting from a place of more profitable companies. And then you start layering on these other profitability screens, which leads you with what we think are the best of the best names within the index, which again, allows us to hold this kind of, of, of position even through more challenging times for markets like we have been over the course of 2023. I'd like to add one more thing uh, that's really important today with regard to free cash flow and free cash flow yield as this index is constructed. When you look at the major small cap indexes like the S&P 600, for example, or the bigger index, the Russell 2000, what you'll find is that as interest rates have risen, because of the way they get their debt primarily, which is through floating rate debt that resets every 90 days. What you'll see is that those two indexes right now are using more and more and more of their EBITDA mm -hmm. to finance their debt service. Somewhere in the S&P 600, it's around 25%. The Russell 2000, it's a little over 30%. And that appears to be somewhat unsustainable, if you will. I mean, it could be a real problem for some of the names that don't generate a lot of free cash flow. When you look at the index that we built, uh, off the S&P 600, which we use free cash flow for, the debt service to EBITDA of the names we own is about 6% today. It's actually in line with the S&P 500. So you have a, a portfolio of names that in this higher interest rate environment, which could go higher or longer, are somewhat better positioned to deal with what the Fed has been doing. And we want to be invested in names that are kind of agnostic about what's going on in the broader economy and the capital market cycle. If you can fund investments in your business through the free cash flow that your business generates, you don't have to go out and raise debt all the time. You don't have to go out and raise equity all the time. That unleashes a really powerful kind of flywheel of being able to continuously reinvest. So that way, when the cost of capital does go up, when money is more expensive, you're not as restrained. It makes you more flexible. And also in down markets, it can make you have a lot more opportunity to be opportunistic when things get tough, when other players who don't have good balance sheets or aren't generating free cash flow are really on the chopping block or on the selling block in the event that times are more tough. Got it. Hence a long-term hold. So basically the premise is build your business. Don't just stay around paying your debt. Correct. Got it. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for joining us today. It's a pleasure you. to be here. Thanks for including us. To learn more about custom indexing, visit us at the link below.